Hey, welcome back. This is part four or five. Hang on a minute. The spawn points was three, so four was the world route. Five, part five. Um, in part five, we're going to take a look at um, importing a scene, which is uh, made in Blender or a 3D modeling application, uh, setting it up as a world, and then uh, in the next part, which will be six, we'll, we'll apply some lighting to that. I was going to do lighting next, but then I realized we needed a space to, to you know, host the lighting. So let's go ahead and get that started. Uh, we're going to use a 3D model called Meeting Space. It's on uh, Sketchfab, and it's made by the user Mozilla Reality. Uh, it's one of the original concepts for a meeting space within Mozilla's Hub project. I don't unfortunately know what that is. I will take a look after this video, um, but I will also link to the model so you can see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start a new world, and we're going to choose basic empty for this, and I'm going to hit start. So here we are in the new world, and the first thing I'm going to do is go to the tools menu here, and I'm going to open up the file browser. And you'll see I'm already in the meeting space folder. So uh, like from my door tutorial, I downloaded the file and I extracted it somewhere sensible. So I'm inside Neos World's tutorial meeting space. Um, I need to rename this top level Unity folder just to like VR stuff. Because it used to just be where my VR chat stuff was. Now it's Neos and VR chat in one folder. So again, with uh, most Sketchfab modules, you'll see a source folder and a textures folder. We need both, so if you go into source, you'll see here there is an FBX file called Meeting Space One Mesh. Do download the file and follow along at home if you uh, like to. I'm going to do, uh, sorry, auto scale unknown height, and then bring it in, and spin it around so we can take a look at it. And so you'll see it's like an entire building facade, except one of the balconies has an interior, and that's the meeting space there. So we'll put that to one side, and then we're going to go back to the textures folder. And we'll see meaning space texture um, unlit.jpg. And then we just import that one as an image texture. And it comes straight in. And those are all the files we need to get going with this uh, world. So the next thing we need to do is apply um, this texture to the material that's on the panel here. For that, we need a material tooltip. So if you go to inventory, uh, essential tools, and then spawn a material tooltip, equip it. Secondary press on the building, you'll get the material that represents the building, and then you can go to edit. And because it's one texture, we just drop it straight in and close, and then we can delete this. We're done with materials. So now you can take a look inside, and you'll see that there is a room there. Um, it is quite dark right now, but that's fine because we need to make it big. So uh, this is always like trial and error. You gotta like keep scaling it until it makes sense. So you can see here it's about the size of my hand. Always go close to it so perspective doesn't fool you. So we still need to get it bigger. Now we're this big, we can go inside the room and we can turn around. We need to start thinking about like how big am I compared to the doorway? So we'll keep going a little bit bigger. If you build a model that you know the units with, you can import it with a known scale, like meters or inches or something. I don't know this one, so we're just uh, winging it. I'm going to go a little bit bigger. This looks good to start with. What I'm going to do now is uh, a couple of things just to make it a bit easier to work with. Right now you can see that it's slanted. This is common when you bring something in and you throw it around. If you go back to your inventory, spawn a dev tool tip, equip it. Secondary, select any part of the building, it's all one mesh, and open it in the inspector. You can hop up to the top of the root, and you'll see the meaning space one mesh. Here, we're going to zero out the X and the Z rotation values in the inspector here, so the X and the Z. So we'll just drag a zero from order offset into here and here. And what this does is it makes sure it's not tilted that way or that way, um, but it preserves the um, Y rotation, which is where it's facing in the world. So with this done, um, we're looking good. I'm going to now do go into physical mode, and you'll see I fall through it. This is because I haven't set the model up to be a what's called a character collider. Character Collider is an object which a character will collide with and that you can walk on. Luckily, inside Essential Tools, there is a tool that can set this up for you. So if you go to Essential Tools again, you find this um, sign color tip here, and you'll see Character Collider Setter Tip. Spawn one of these into the world. Equip it. Point at the mesh that you want to make collidable. It will flash, and then uh, you can walk on it. 
And so now I'm walking on it and I can check the height here. So I still feel a bit big here. Like I feel like a giant here. I see my, my head's almost touching the ceiling. So we want to go a little bit bigger. So let's put this on a tool shelf. Go a little bit bigger. And now we can check. That's more like it. So there's space here um, for, you know, more than one person to go. The table also looks like a big enough for people um, to have a nice meeting around. It does look a bit too big from this um, direction. So I'm actually going to shrink things down just a little bit. That's good. Yeah, that looks good. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and zero out those rotation values again. You can see that they've become minusculely away from zero. I like them to be zero, zero, so that um, everything else is easy to align. There we go. I'm also going to go to the grabbable here, and I'm going to turn that off. You can do that in two ways. I'm going to do it in this way because I have the inspector open, which is I just go ahead and I delete grabbable. And I'm going to leave the inspector open because we might need it, but now you'll see I can't grab it. So this is our um, our world um, room set up. Um, if we go out to the balcony here, you'll see that we've got the default skybox and that's not ideal. So let's get a better skybox in. So uh, back to the root of the inventory, nearest essentials, skyboxes, and then we get to choose a skybox. Um, I like, I don't think I'm gonna be able to find it. Uh, I think it's that one. Nope, it's not that one. That one, that's the one. Yeah, there we go. So now what we've got is kind of a big complex in the middle of a desert for some secret meetings or something. Um, you'll see here, and uh, you can you can take a look at the other balconies. Um, the model is very well made in the, um, each of these balconies are just a, another balcony. There's no room behind it, but without flying, um, you can't see into another room. You, you can't see into another building. It's just uh, set up that way so that um, the illusion is preserved that you're an actual building. You can look down here and at the moment you'll see the world plate, but we could get rid of that and you'll see like a gap. We can fix that by adding sort of a fog volume, although I won't do that in this video. Maybe we'll do it in uh, one on fog volumes just to kind of finish off this world uh, another time but I wanted to um, make a couple more tweaks to this and um, then call it here so that we have a short video of just bringing in the environment, making it walkable, um, aligning it, and then uh, you can do that with whatever you might find on Sketchfab or something you might want to build in, in, um, in Blender. I encourage you in Blender just to like build stuff, throw some cubes around, um, you know, make it into a world. One of the things you might notice here is that we have a couple of lighting artifacts. I'll cover those next video. Um, you'll see here that there's a, a weird kind of hole here. And that's because there is um, a couple of points in this mesh where there are holes. If your mesh doesn't have holes in it, then this shouldn't occur. We're going to get round a bit by um, changing up the lighting next time and uh, adjusting things so that that's not an issue. You'll also see here we've got some weird shadows. So we're inside right now, but the sun is shining a shadow onto the wall here of these uh, light fixtures. So we'll cover those next time when we light this world. But this has been part... I need to keep better track of which part this is. Five? Yeah, part five. This has been part five. We've got the model in. Um, it's aligned. We'll go on to part six with the, with the lighting soon. Once again, thanks to Mozilla Reality um, for providing the model. It is a CC attribution or CC0 attribution, which means I need to give you a link to it and let the people know how who's made it. But I usually do that anyway. Like if you make something that I use, I want to let people know who made it. And so uh, that's who did it. I'll leave that link in the uh, description so that you can follow along at home. Let me know what you think. I'll see you next time for lighting.